A few months ago, I proved that both Apple's desktop and laptop computers suffer from thermal throttling. Now, for the uninitiated amongst you, that means that the computer's components get so hot that they are forced to reduce the voltage and the clock speed, and by extension, lower the computer's performance just to make sure that the parts don't overheat. No es algo bueno. But as it turns out, to give Apple some credit, I suppose, their coolers are capable of more. Because in a follow-up video, I demonstrated that when I replaced the stock thermal paste, which is the grease that you find in between the computer's CPU and copper heatsink cooler, which kind of helps the heat transfer between the two parts, I was able to improve my 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro's performance by about 7% on average, and that's actually quite a lot. Unfortunately, it was still hitting 100 degrees Celsius and being throttled to about 2.9 gigahertz on my KB Lake i5 7360U CPU. So that's it, video's over, right? <laughs> not so fast, I'm going to show you something awesome. And I'm sorry to disappoint, it's not an $800 vacuum, but it, it's almost as cool. I'm going to apply liquid metal thermal compound, which is so hot right now. Well, actually it's, it's cool, but regardless, unlike traditional thermal compounds, which are mostly silicone with a few additives like zinc oxide, liquid metal is, well, metal. Gallanston to be exact, which is a mixture of gallium, tin, and indium. Oh, by the way, all of the stuff in this video can be purchased through my Amazon affiliate link at don't worry, I didn't sell my soul for a vacuum.com. It's a real website. Okay, quick science lesson. Gallium, which is the main metal in Gallanston, has a melting point of around just above room temperature, 29 degrees Celsius, which is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. However, when you add indium, the melting point of that drops to a frigid negative 19 degrees Celsius. So unless you leave your computer turned off outside in a know, northern Russian winter, liquid metal will stay liquid. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, so whatever, why use this stuff? Well, liquid metal is far better, at least in theory, at transferring heat than conventional thermal paste, and that's why we're going to use it. However, it does come with some serious risks. Unlike thermal grease, which stays in place, this stuff is not viscous, it's liquid metal, it is a liquid, and so it can move around pretty freely, which may not seem like such a big deal until you remember that liquid metal is not just thermally conductive, but it's also electrically conductive, and that can be bad. So if it leaks or spills, you run the risk of shorting something and ruining your entire computer. Not ideal. Now, technically, if you apply liquid metal correctly, that shouldn't be an issue. But because this is a laptop and is going to be subjected to a lot of motion, I figured I would rather be safe than sorry. So I'm going to apply some conformal coating, which is basically just a silicone and lacquer insulating layer. And I'm going to add it to the traces around the CPU die, as well as some of the capacitors surrounding the cooler. So if some does shift around a bit, nothing's going to happen. Now this stuff isn't expensive, but if you want to go a cheaper route, you could use clear nail polish lacquer instead. Be warned, however, that that may act as a thermal insulator, which kind of defeats the purpose of this whole thing. So just get the conformal coating. Again, at your favorite website down below. All right, liquid metal time. Push the plunger very, very slowly because this stuff comes out crazy fast as Linus Tech Tips discovered. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Now there is a neat looking needle style applicator included, but I didn't find that it helped restrict flow that much and it was very difficult to suck any excess back up, so I don't recommend using it. Now, if you're feeling particularly clumsy, you can do what Linus did and put the stuff into a parts tray first, but I decided to just put it directly onto the die and it was fine. Slowly apply a blob and then kind of basically suck all of it back up into the syringe until you're left with a tiny dot. See how little my tiny little dot is? Well, it's still way too much, and I had to remove quite a bit of it off camera. You don't want it to look pooled up. A tiny little microscopic bit goes a very long way. But man, moving that Q-tip and seeing it spread out so pretty made me feel like Michelangelo. Liquid metal really brings out your inner Italian. I'm so sorry, that was stupid. Now, it's also recommended to add some to the underside of your heatsink where the cooler contacts the dye. I masked it off with some scotch tape to make the process a little easier, but that's not necessary. Please note that liquid metal is not compatible with aluminum heat sinks, and it corrodes the metal super quickly because aluminum is pretty porous. In fact, liquid metal corrodes all common metal types, including the copper found in my MacBook. However, very, very slowly, not enough to impact performance over the next several years. Aluminum, no. Everything else, okay. Okay, so I finally reassembled my MacBook Pro, and this is the moment of truth. Will she power back on? Ha <laughs> ha, yes! But how does she perform? 
First, I did the same Final Cut Pro video export that I performed a few months back. Now, the improvements are noticeable, but they're not huge over the upgraded thermal paste. It's only about 4%. Now, that does sum up to 13.5% in total from the paste that Apple applied from the factory, and that is pretty monumental. But for my previous modification, eh, not much. And the same held true in the Handbrake 4K ProRes to H.265 test, about a 4% improvement from my already upgraded thermal paste. Now, I'd be inclined to say that the 4% improvement isn't worth the risk, but wait, there's more. I noticed that during these tests, the laptop seemed a lot quieter, that the fan wasn't screaming at full speed. So I went into Windows, because macOS is horrible at hardware monitoring, and after several minutes in an IDA64 stress test, I observed that not only was the CPU running at about 3.1 gigahertz, which is a 200 megahertz improvement, excellent, but that the temperatures had dropped a full 10 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees. Now, it was still warm at about 89 to 90 degrees, but it wasn't throttling for the first time ever, even after my first thermal paste replacement. In fact, the fans had even spun down to a much lower and quieter RPM, all while gaining an extra 6% in clock speed and performance. So was it worth it? Well, I guess that's for you to decide. But I get about a 15% improvement over the stock configuration, my fans are quieter, the CPU is significantly cooler, and while I didn't test it, my battery life and longevity is theoretically improved. Now, many may believe that these improvements over the regular thermal paste swap isn't worth the risk, but I'm willing to take that gamble. Please visit Don't Worry I Didn't Sell My Soul for a Vacuum.com, that's a real website, to buy your thermal paste or really anything else on Amazon to support the channel. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed and check out these other awesome videos. But as always, thank you for watching and stay snazzy.